Let me talk now about cryptocurrency. I've mentioned it uh, a number of times, but I want to go into a little more uh, detail. So cryptocurrency is a digital token. So it's not a physical token, it's digital. And it's cryptographically secured, and you're able to transfer it. So one important aspect of a cryptocurrency is something known as asymmetric key cryptography. So the owner of cryptocurrency actually starts out with a private key, which is just a long random number. That's one part of the key, and that's secret. There's also a public part of the key. So what happens is that long random number is passed through a mathematical algorithm. And what comes out is a public key. So the private key is not for sharing, but the public key is basically used to determine an address. So this is important. Um, it's easy to go from the private key to the public key. But with current technology, it's not feasible to go from the public key to the private key. So you can't derive somebody's private key today from the public information. So it's asymmetric key cryptography means that there are two different keys that are really uh, important for what you do. So um, again, the uh, public key is used to derive an address, and I'll show you how that's actually uh, done. And then when we actually transact in cryptocurrency, um, if I want to receive, then I will basically set up an address. How do I do that? Well, I generate a random number, that's my private key. Then I pass that through an algorithm, it gives me a public key, then I derive an address, and then somebody basically signs over their crypto to me. So, how does that happen? Well, in signing over the crypto, you basically use a digital signature algorithm. And that algorithm, once signed, proves that you're the owner of the actual currency. And when that happens, it's transferred uh, to me. Now, that currency is associated with my private uh, key. And of course, I can do the same thing. I want to send you um, the cryptocurrency. You generate a random number. You pass that through an algorithm and you get a public key. You turn that into an address. I see your address. And then I sign over my crypto to you. And when I sign it, I sign it in a way with this digital signature that anybody in the network that sees my signature and knows my public address can verify for sure that I must be the one that has the private key. As soon as that's done, then it is effectively transferred to you. And transfer, notice we're not transferring the private keys. We're actually creating a new um, private key every time uh, this is done. So this is, uh, this is the way that transactions actually occur. Private keys, remember I said, are secret. Well, um, this is something we will deal with in the fourth course when we talk about risks, but let me just give you a little preview. Uh, if you lose your private key, then, um, then somebody's got the right to spend what was your coin. Indeed, there was a good uh, example early in the space on some TV uh, talk show uh, somebody was brought on to uh, kind of explain what was going on in the crypto space. And the interviewer said, well, what does a private key actually look like? And the person pulled their wallet out and showed, well, it's just like a QR like this. But everybody on TV saw the QR. So somebody actually took the QR and spent the crypto. 
this person had. So in showing your private key, it was foolish um, because you lose your crypto. It turns out that this was a good lesson because the person that grabbed uh, the crypto sent it back uh, saying, don't show your private key again. So it's important to keep your private key a uh, secret and there are many different ways to do that. Uh, one way that is highly recommended is to keep it unconnected to the internet. So in a USB key or even a hard copy, uh, you should not have it linked to the internet. There was an interesting story in the New York Times this year about somebody that, um, that basically decided to store their private keys in a special hardware uh, wallet that was password protected. But then the person forgot the password. And it turns out that the crypto in the wallet are worth about $120 million. And this device, you can try the password up to 10 times. And on the 10th, if you get it incorrect, then the hardware physically destroys itself. This person has tried eight times, got two more to go. And if they fail, 120 million gone. So again, this is an issue, right? It's kind of analogous. You're walking down the street in New York and some cash falls out of your pocket and somebody picks it up, it's gone. And the same thing, you lose your private key, it's gone. Okay, so um, what do these cryptos actually look like? And this is, uh, this is from CoinMarketCap, which uh, is a website that tracks thousands of cryptos. And you can kind of see here the top cryptos, Bitcoin at the top, Ethereum. There's different types of cryptos here. So there's some stable coins that are in this list. So we'll talk about these stable coins later, and these are tied to the dollar. So Tether and US dollar coin uh, are on this list. And the list goes on, and many of these have different blockchain technologies that we will talk about um, later in the, uh, the learning experience. So uh, I show you only the, the top 20 uh, here but again, there's many, many cryptos. And even these top 20, even like number 19, it's got substantial value. And this is all value that's recently been created. So within the space of crypto, we're talking about approximately $1.5 trillion of value that's been created uh, over a very short uh, period of time. So this is uh, small compared to, for example, Apple, that's got two trillion of market cap, but nevertheless, Apple's an important company and people notice it. And people are noticing what's happening in the crypto space and in particular, the DeFi space.